this one for the soldiers. Alright, so you know the Canon EOS R6. Obviously, I have that camera and I'm um, currently filming on it. Let's just get into the video. So I've had the Canon EOS R6 for about a month now. Basically, I have been completely blown away in every circumstance I've put this camera in. It has never really failed to do anything. It's more of just been a problem for me trying to figure out how this camera is different from my previous camera, such as the menu being like so much more uh, massive because of the differences um, and the additional features, like lots and lots of features. This camera has tons of features and it I probably can't even pack them all into the wrist for view because I haven't even used them all. Um, but I'm just going to talk about what my experience has been using this camera for the past month and what I um, am aspiring to do with this camera in the future. Let's just say one thing. I started with the Canon T6i, which is actually right here. Obviously, not a horrible camera. It was pretty much perfect for all my needs back when I was using it. However, I did feel the need to upgrade, especially when I was using it for video and low light and sports performance. That camera is a crop sensor and although it is massively better than any phone camera could ever perform, it's not really a professional camera and that's what I was looking for and that's what I found with the R6. The R6 completely destroys the T6i. I mean, it's not even, there's no comparison. You like. They're completely different cameras. The T6i is a DSLR, the R6 is a mirrorless camera, and the R6, take everything the T6i has and multiply it by five. That's essentially what this camera is. I was originally shooting 720p on my T6i if I wanted slow motion. Now I can shoot 4K 60fps and 1080p 120fps with autofocus and no crop. Like, that is something that is pretty insane, and I don't see any other full-frame cameras doing that um, for the price. Anyways, I should probably put a, more, a little bit more structure into this, so let's take a look at the specs. This camera has a 20 megapixel full-frame image sensor, which 20 megapixels, I'd say, is really great. I don't feel the need for anything more than 30, and my old camera was 24, so technically I'm losing 4 million pixels of resolution, but... I don't see a difference. I actually think this camera looks better. My dad's Canon 6D from 2011 is 19.9 megapixels, and we have a giant print blown up on our wall. It's like a family portrait, and it's like three feet or four feet tall and like three feet wide. It's an absolutely massive print, so you don't need 45 megapixels. That's why I didn't get the R5. Also because the R5 was very, very expensive, and I don't want to pay additional money for a camera that has features that I wouldn't use. Anyways, back to the specs. On top of that 20 megapixel sensor, you will also have 12 and 20 FPS burst. Now the 12 is only in the mechanical shutter mode. You cannot get higher than that in the mechanical shutter mode, but when you switch it into electronic shutter, which is fully silent by the way, you have 12 FPS in the mechanical shutter mode, which is actual physical shutter coming down on the image in electronic mode you have 20 FPS. Um, this is for shooting photos. Essentially, you're just pressing the button once and it will take it at the very least four or five photos and you're in the 20 FPS mode. And that has posed some problems, but it has also been extremely awesome. You're pretty much never gonna miss a shot, especially with the 5,000, I think over 5,000 autofocusing points that this camera has. Coming from a camera with um, 20 or something, Going from 20 to 5,000 is incredibly different and incredibly, f and it just blows me away how awesome the autofocus performance on this camera is. And even now I'm using this um, in high autofocus mode and the audio is probably gonna sound horrible because the microphone is behind me, but it's tracking my eye and it's keeping me in focus. My old camera could never do that. And now everyone says, oh, Sony has the best autofocus for mirrorless cameras. That's honestly debatable now. The original R was solid. That was a solid camera, but now that the R5 and R6 are out, I'm really starting to question if Sony actually has the lead anymore because Canon has pretty much perfected it. Um, the only instances where this camera doesn't pick up the eye when I'm using eye autofocus is when people are wearing masks. And it's really strange. I don't know why, because you can still see the eye. And um, I, guess, I guess it just trips it up and it doesn't recognize it as a face. So it just goes to the regular autofocus points on the face. 
um, which is okay. I mean, it, it still has sharp images, and as long as you're using putting good glass in front of this camera, you're going to get amazing images. Anyways, we've talked about the sensor, we've talked about the photo capabilities, and now onto the video capabilities. We've got 4K at up to 60 frames per second with massive data rates, like very, I think it's like 320 megabits per second, which is a lot. Um, and it's shooting 10 bit, um, 422, which no other camera has in this price range and for full frame and uncropped. Like, the only other camera that comes close is the Panasonic um, Lumix S5, and that has a 1.5x crop in 4K mode, and I don't believe in the 4K 60 mode, and I don't believe it's 10 bit. Um, that is why I, I love this camera. And everyone says, oh, it overheats, it overheats, it overheats. Yes, it technically does have the overheating timer in it, but the overheating timer is the exact same time that the camera is like allowed to maximum record for. Most cameras can only record for 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That the Whenever I record, it tells me, oh, 30 minutes until it overheats. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and record 4K 60 FPS for 30 minutes. I'm shooting 4K 24 right now, and I'm not even seeing a single... Nothing's coming up on the screen. Um, the R5, however, if you do shoot 4K, like that, that thing overheats all the time. Um, but this camera, I have really not had... I actually haven't had any any issues with overheating um and i'm shooting log i think i think i'm shooting log i hope i'm shooting log i mean i don't really think log is the most necessary thing for this scenario um however why not and i would say the quality is pretty darn good obviously it's 4k so you can punch in a bunch and then there's the eye tracking autofocus on top of that and face tracking autofocus if the eye isn't visible. And I think the ca oh yeah, the camera actually, does, this camera also does have animal eye tracking autofocus, which I have tried on my puppy. Um, albeit the puppy does move around a lot, um, but I was still able to get very, very sharp images. Um, so yeah, so for to recap for video, the specs are 4K at up to 60 FPS, uncropped 10 bit, um, 320 something or so, 300 something megabits per second for data rates um, maximum 300 something me megabits per second at the maximum data rate and then we have 1080p at 120 fps for ultra slow motion so that's those are the specs those are just the general specs let's talk about what I've been able to do with this camera. Obviously you saw that opening sequence, the opening sequence where I was looking and typing in the stuff on the computer, um, that is shot on the R6. The second it transitions to B-roll shots of the R6, then that's my friend's T7i. Um, we've recorded with that and the rest of that until the end of that is T7i footage and now this is R6 footage. Essentially the R6, um, you're probably going to see a major difference in quality on this channel now because I'm shooting 4K. Obviously, I probably don't have to, but for the better data rates and 10 bit, oh, I'll, I'll do it. Um, I don't. I have an eight terabyte hard drive. I'm not really concerned on space. Although this SD card is 128 gigabytes and it fills up very quickly, even with 4K on it. So. I do have to be a bit careful in that regard, but it is astounding how good the quality of the videos are, and the photos I've been able to get out of this camera are quite crazy as well. I really, really, really like using eye autofocus for portraits. I mean, when you have a camera that has 5,000 autofocus points and can lock onto the pupil of someone's eye and track it, while also shooting 20 frames in one second, why wouldn't you use all those features? Obviously, you don't really need to shoot 20 FPS for portraits. I typically keep the camera in 12 because I am a bit shutter happy. Well, that's probably because my old camera only did five frames in one second. And even then it would stall out at six because I was shooting raw and the buffer on that camera was horrible. Um, this camera has a buffer of like 250 images or something. I, if you're gonna hold a shutter down for 20 seconds to record 250 images to your SD card, I mean, maybe you need a 1DX, but um, I don't think anyone's gonna do that. Even if you're shooting sports, like it's only for a few seconds. Um, I don't think I'm gonna continuously hold down until the whole buffer goes away. So I think I'll be fine. The raw files from this camera are very powerful, although quite unsupported pretty much everywhere I try to upload them. Like Google Drive can view them. Um, originally on my 
computer, like the CR3 files, I couldn't even see the previews. It was just like the image thing. Like it just had like a, a, a logo, like an icon, like image. And I couldn't actually see what the image looked like until I put it into either Lightroom or Photoshop or anything like that. Um, another downside with the um, file types as of right now, DaVinci Resolve doesn't support the files from the R6. And that's my main editing software. Although I believe only the free version doesn't support it. I believe the full version definitely does support it. Um, and I just don't have the money to buy the full version right now because this camera was a lot of money and I am saving for something else at the moment. So I'll just use Premiere Pro for now, which actually works quite well, aside from when it crashes like every five seconds. That's why I used DaVinci. Essentially, the files are the only downside I really see with this camera, and over time that'll get fixed. Firmware updates, uh, extensions for Microsoft, I think if you have a Mac, it'll work flawlessly. Um, although Windows, the file management system is a lot more um, all over the place, really. Um, I'm not an Apple guy myself, but... I hear that people with Macs have not had any issues with the files of this camera, and I'll just put some sample images on the screen that I've edited, and I'd say they're just really, really good. Like, if people are like, but it's only 20 megapixels. Like I said earlier, my dad's 6D Mark One is 19 point like one something megapixels, and we have a massive three by four foot print downstairs. So, um. I don't think the megapixel count really matters as long as you're putting good glass in front of the sensor. This video is currently being filmed on the 17-35 f2.8L, yes, 17-35, first generation L lens, um, before the 16-35, and this lens is from 1996, and it works flawlessly with this camera. I'm not buying RF glass. I'm not. Have you seen the prices of RF glass? Do I look like I can afford RF glass? I don't need RF glass. However, maybe in the future I'll get it, but the EF glass works amazing. Adapting EF lenses from, and and I honestly plan to keep adapting EF lenses for DSLRs to this mirrorless camera because it has the same autofocus functionality and they have better manual focus. They have focus by wire, which technically isn't as good because if the focus by wire mechanism breaks, then it's done and it doesn't work anymore. But, but, the RF lenses don't have repeatable focus, um, which is a major downside for me. And I, and hey, I'm not gonna pay 20, the equivalent of this lens for the RF mount is, I believe, the, the 15 to 35 f2.8 with IS, which is pretty insane. Um, is I believe $2,500. That's the same price as this camera. I don't need that lens right now, and I don't think I'm gonna need it for a long time. Um, although the RF mount um, is amazing and all that, I'm just not really interested in investing in that right now. I have um, I have all the EF lenses I need. I have all L lenses. It's practically perfect. So yes, um, and you shouldn't be worried about any functionality loss when using EF lenses on the R mount, um, RF mount, because it, with the adapter, which the adapter is an added price, um, it works flawlessly. I also forgot to mention that this camera has IBIS. So IBIS is actually a type of um, subtropical bird that can be found in... Wait, no. That, that's a different... No, that... Whoops. IBIS is in-body image stabilization, where the sensor is actually moving to stabilize the image. If you have a lens that is image stabilized, on top of IBIS, you're going to get some incredibly smooth footage. And if you don't have a lens that's image stabilized, well hey, it technically is image stabilized now with IBIS. Apparently this camera can get up to 8 stops of IBIS depending on the lens, it all depends on the image circle. Um, but I'd say that's pretty darn impressive. And I, I, I like it a lot, the only issue I've ever had with the IBIS is at 17mm on this lens. Um, it has a bit of warping, but then you just zoom in a little bit, or you turn IBIS off if you really want to, and the warping goes away. Because when you're moving a sensor around inside of a wide-angle image, you will get that warping, and it, it happens on all cameras with IBIS. But I'd say the IBIS is pretty darn great, especially when I've been using it with the 70 to 200. Um, with that has image stabilization, but on top of the IBIS, it's just like butter. It's literal butter. Like it's so smooth. Um, I think it's awesome. And, um, so yeah, 
And for the record, let's just talk about ergonomics and the way this camera feels. This camera is essentially, you know, a very powerful mirrorless camera with the same sensor and processor as the 1DX Mark III, which is a very high-end professional camera, compacted down into a mirrorless system. And obviously it's smaller, it's the size of like a normal DSLR. You can make it the size of the 1DX if you wanted to by getting the battery grip, which I might actually get in the future. Anyways, that's besides the point. The ergonomics of this camera are quite incredible. Coming from it, like, I thought my TX6i felt good in the hands, and then I put this camera in my hands, I'm like, how did I ever, like, use the T6i, like, and, like, not feel how plasticky that camera felt? This camera feels so solid in the hands, all the buttons are in the right place. Once you get used to the setup, you have the, um, scroll wheel on the back for aperture, you have the scroll wheel on top for ISO, and you have the scroll wheel in the front for shutter speed, and you, you also have the autofocus joystick for if you're using that mode. This camera was built for, like, really, it, it was, it's like professionally built. It's, I mean, it's a professional camera, so it is professionally built. It feels amazing in the hands, and yeah, that's just one of the many great things about this camera. It just blows me away with how good it feels. Like, it, you, you you pick up this camera and you're like, whew. Obviously, the, the, I have practically only barely, I have barely scratched the surface of what this camera can do. I've only had it for a month. I just kind of want to put this review out there so you all know that I'm using a new camera. And I'll be putting out tutorials for stuff inside this camera, like the time lapse feature and all that stuff. I have a few things planned out um, as I learn how to use them. I don't want to release a tutorial without actually knowing how to use it myself. So once I learn how to use these things, I'm going to be releasing tutorials and making more videos about this camera um, because it truly is amazing. And I want to make sure I am um, um, using this to the full extent that I can. And I have been doing some a few professional shoots with this camera so far, and it's never let me down. In fact, it's been completely blowing my old camera out of the water. So I'd say it was worth the upgrade. I had been planning to upgrade for a long, long time. And when I, as soon as I first saw the, the leaks for the R6, like back in February was when this camera first leaked. I'm like, holy cow, those specs are insane. And then fast forward to the end of September, I finally bought the camera after it was released in July. And I was just like, perfect. This is awesome. I love this camera. If you enjoyed this video, do be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more R6 content coming in the future. And I hope to see you all in the next video. My name is Rocco Germani, and I'll see you then. Peace. I almost knocked my freaking camera over. Oh my gosh. Okay. And what do you, what do you guys think? Mike in the shot? Mike like down like here. Let's go let's go to 17 millimeters. You guys like the mic down here, so when I zoom into 35 zoom into 35 you can't see you you can barely see it or here. You can't see it or would you like it in here like that? I don't know. Maybe it adds a bit of depth to the shot. I can't tell. Um, better audio is definitely going to be here, but this is doable as well. Maybe I should have shot this whole video with the microphone down there because maybe some people won't like that. Oh well. And I'm going to end this video now because it's... I've been recording for 23 minutes and 17 seconds. No overheat signal!